Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. I'm diving into the North Node readings. This is for the North Node placement in Gemini. So if that is where your North Node is placed, or if you have a stellium in the sign of Gemini, this reading is for you. Um, stelliums are three or more placements in one house um, or one sign. So it is a general reading. It's not sign, I'm sorry, not house specific. So um, it may or may not resonate with you. That's okay. I'm starting out with a few oracles from the Wisdom of Oracle. And then we'll get clarifiers with tarot and wrap up with a few um, other oracles. Okay. First card out is Orphaned. We have Orphaned. Um, this is number five which are really about um, sudden um, unexpected changes, um, feeling like, you know, you really just are not, you know, in alignment, included um, in integrity with yourself. It's just, you know, it's literally what it, what it says. It feels like you're orphaned. Um, this could relate to any aspect of your life. Um, now, source is coming through with deep knowing. This reduces to a seven, it's a 43, four plus three is seven, which is also about changes, but that's more about um, divinely guided changes, things that we've worked towards, things that we know um, we want to change or you know alter. So sevens really represent that. Fives are more sudden, unexpected, um, harsh, you know, things that are more karmic. Um, and now we have exchanging gifts. 27, which reduces to a nine. Nines are, uh, about being almost at the finish line, you know, it's right before 10. So, um, you know, kind of closing out a, a, a cycle here. So with these energies here, and this is kind of an interesting energy, um, orphans, deep knowing and exchanging gifts. I'm getting that maybe some of you have been getting or have gotten in the past the short end of the stick in situations where things were not equal give and take. Um, you know, you're showing up like, you know, wholeheartedly, you know, with you know, pure intentions, really wanting to, you know, build relationships, foster relationships that are already, um, already, um, like intact, you know, really wanting to like cultivate like a sense of kinship and, you know, true belonging, fulfillment on both sides, but perhaps the people that you have been close to, and, you know, this is any as aspect of your life just did not reciprocate. Um, you know, and so that left you with the feelings of being orphaned that left you with the feeling of, you know, exchanging gifts but you know not not being like fully fulfilled for what you're getting in return um deep knowing i think this has to do with your intuition with knowing that you do have a lot to offer people you are very intuitive you um you know offer your help and your assistance to whoever needs it um you know this is north node in gemini that means your south node is in sagittarius sagittarius is you know the philosopher the teacher um, it's all about expanding the higher consciousness and traveling. Um, it's also about luck, you know, really blessing people with, um, you know, the things you know best, you know, with knowledge. So, you know, with that being yourself, know that's what you do well. That's gifts and talents that you brought over from past lives. It's also your comfort zone. So your true note, it's Gemini, it's asking you to be very flexible, you know, to remain creative with the way you communicate with people and foster your relationships, but don't get too, um, I want to say like too focused or too tied to um, like how you can help others. I think that that's probably a shadow side of Sagittarius. Um, it's just kind of like marrying yourself to an outcome where really it's supposed to be about, you know, if you think about the zodiac symbol, pulling back that bow and arrow and shooting it into the infinite, um, you know, and, and kind of trusting and having unshakable faith that wherever that arrow hits or where it's being launched into is kind of going to bring back um, a modicum of abundance and prosperity. All right, so that's what I have for these energies. Let's go ahead and get clarifications with the tarot. I'm using the eighth house tarot deck. First card out we have is nine of fire. Oh, here's Sagittarius. Speaking of Sagittarius, nine of fire, moon in Sagittarius. This is clear. Um, yeah. So nine of fire. I'm sorry. Yeah, nine of fire, nine of wands. Kind of coming down the home stretch, but also feeling burdened. Like, you know, battle weary, having burdens that um, probably are not meant for you, carrying other people's things, having uh, feelings of obligation, and just a little bit weary. You know, fire energy is action, 
action oriented, it's passionate, um, it's all about you know fast pace. So you also could just be feeling a little bit fatigued in all aspects of your life. Needing to really rest and think about where you want to invest your time because look, you have seven of earth, which is seven of pentacles. Um, sorry, my camera's not focusing, but um, this is Saturn and Taurus. So with this seven of earth, seven of pentacles, looking at where you want to plant your seeds. Obviously where you've been planting them before has not been fruitful. Um, so this is kind of like getting back to the drawing board, you know, while you're in that orphan. An orphan is kind of like, it's a little bit of like hermit energy as well because um, you get to like stop and reflect and you know really start to heal yourself heal and maybe think about where you can show up better in life i have now the king of fire king of wands leo energy this is you um, seeking to step back into this um, space of empowerment um, you know it's more fire energy clarifying this orphan card is all not all, I'm sorry, two fire energy, and then you have seven of pentacles, that's earth energy, but the fire energy is really speaking to me for some reason, probably because that's your self node, Sagittarius, fire sign. Um, you know, you're seeking to get back to that place of like, you know, where you really do best, um, your innate gifts and talents. But remember the south node is a comfort zone. So to really kind of ascend to a higher sense of self, expand the consciousness, you are going to want to go towards the energies of your true node. That's Gemini energy, Mercurian energy. So definitely speaking up when things um, are not jiving with you as well. Gemini is a very talkative sign. Oh, too many flipped over. Okay, one more shuffle. Okay, here we go. Four of Pentacles, Four of Earth, Sun, and Capricorn. So being a little bit afraid to move forward, um, I'm getting that you know deep down what you're capable of, but there could be things surface level from uh, preventing you from going forward. Um, could be people kind of, you know, speaking things to you that are un untruthful and you're kind of believing it. It could be lack of support for the people around you, but sources is saying like you deep down, you know, like what you are meant to do, right? What you're talented at, what you're good at, what you have to share, the gifts you have to share with people. Um, two cards flipped out. We have eight of earth, more earth energy, Virgo. And then we have the moon. Yeah, so what you do well in terms of your work, I'm getting this as like work related. Um, any type of career you have, or even a side hustle, just, you know, kind of what you're passionate about and what you do professionally. That moon energy, oh, I'm sorry, high priestess, which is moon energy, that high priestess there is kind of like shadow. It's kind of like keeper of secrets. So I'm getting that maybe some of you have not let on to what it is exactly you want to share. Like maybe people know what it is you're good at, but it's like you might have like one project or one big um, reveal that um, a lot of people don't know about. Maybe you're releasing something. Maybe you've been working on something for quite some time because you do have the Eight of Pentacles. That's the card of work. So you've been kind of working diligently on something, whether it's, you know, taking the classes, um, joining groups online, um, doing your own independent research, and really honing the skill or craft. But, you know, again, the people close to you don't know that. It's kind of hidden. But, you know, with the deep knowing and then that high priestess energy, it's kind of like the... the uh, like the higher planes, right? So like divinely guided um, gifts that um, are bestowed upon you, like you know it, but it's not really showing up in the 3D, if that makes sense. Like you might not feel like the greatest. You might be looking at other people, like social media, what they're posting, what they're doing and feeling like you're not like on their level, but sources here to say that actually you're pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Okay. So let's see here. Clarifying, exchanging gifts, four of air, yeah. This is a healing card, four of swords, Jupiter and Libra. Intentional pause. Like I was saying earlier with that um, orphan card, it's kind of like hermit energy. So is the four of swords. It's like kind of taking stock of where you need to rest, what you need to release, quieting the mind. And now we have five of air, five of swords. This is Venus and Aquarius, more air energy. The five of swords is deception. Um, it is people kind of being untruthful, you know, kind of saying one thing, doing another, or plotting behind your back. And that's why I, I, I was saying earlier that I feel like you don't, with the orphan energy, it's like there are people around you that don't support you or you know what I mean maybe like are just kind of there to be in your face but they're not really like true um, supporters companions people that are going to 
really be like cheer you on and like really celebrate your wins. And now we have the chariot. So maybe you're like thinking of moving away from these people too. It's a card of cancer. I always see the chariot is like um, fire energy though. It's about movement while also balancing your divine feminine, divine masculine, balancing all the elements within yourself. But I'm getting with that chariot card is once you get back to, you know, your good graces, your senses and really restore your confidence, you're going to be moving into a new cycle, really leaving behind um, the, the situation that has not really benefited you. So I'm going to get a few moonology cards now. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. There we go. Gemini, your uh, true note energy. The answers you need are coming. So whatever's hidden here with that high priestess card and with the deep knowing, I'm getting that it's going to pull down into the 3D and things will start to manifest before your, your eyes, before your very own eyes. And you'll maybe become a little bit more of a believer in yourself. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. So yeah, self-love. This is like loving who you are and what you have to offer. A win-win outcome is forecast. Absolutely. Full moon in Libra. Yeah. But I think it's really going to start with you. Start with um, you, you know, kind of seeing your worth, seeing that you deserve to be around people who do support you, who do love you, who are not going to be saying one thing and doing another behind your back. Um, go ahead and take a deep breath. If you need to pause the video, do so, because I'm going to get three angel answers for any questions you may have or scenarios that are... Um, just kind of at the front of your mind and you want to know what is up with it. So once you do that, I'm going to pull. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. So here's your angel angels for your first question. Your first question is communicate clearly. And remember, I was saying that about your North Node being placed in Gemini. Gemini is the ruler over the third house along with Mercury. So it's all about communication in any way possible. Also being very multifaceted. Um, you know, good and comfortable with being um, a part of different things and not marrying yourself to just one thing, like I said before. Get more information. Maybe some of you are feeling a little insecure because you um, do not have all the information or training that you need. Um, not that anything, not that everything always requires a ton of training, but some of you, again, could be just feeling like, um, yeah, you have to study more. And that's like the South Node Sagittarius vibes of, you know, that higher learning type of thing. But I think with Gemini, it would just kind of, kind of go off of like pure creativity and ingenuity. Um, and now trust. So trust your gifts. Yeah, trust your innate gifts. Trust the things that you already bring to the table. Um, people are going to see the value in that. And you won't have to really like, you know, be like selling your credentials. You'll be selling yourself. All right, so let's close out with a few messages from our animal guides, our animal spirit. We have Meerkat. Get support from mine. I'm sorry. Get support from a trusted group of like-minded friends. There we go. So, like I was saying, the people around you are not supportive, and um, or have not been as supportive as you would like them to be. I should say. So, this is where I think once you get over like feeling a little insecure or afraid to open up that's really what's going to attract people that are like-minded to you you know it's like you're going to attract your soul tribe just by being your authentic self now we have octopus practice shape-shifting by altering your physical appearance and mannerism so that's gemini energy that's your north node energy I think Gemini is so social, um, you know, they're the twins, you know, the Zodiac, they represent the twins, kind of, you know, one person, but two in one, you know, they can kind of fit in wherever they go. And this is the energy that you're going to have to really embody. And it's not about being fake or, you know, just putting on a show. It's really about being um, adaptable, you know, and flexible. And now we have Emu. This is a good time to go on a new adventure definitely well that's both gemini and sagittarius energy that's both your north and south nodes so you know it's not always about fully coming out of your south node energy it's just about balancing the two um really like marrying the light side of each sign and then of course you have to take into consideration what houses they are in so because that's going to tell you like what areas of your life you can do that um but yeah this is what i have for you north node and gemini really great energy i think you just really need to um, you know, let go of some of the 
the obligation that you have to be around people that just are no longer a part of, you know, your soul's purpose, your life purpose, and that's okay. Um, you know, you can just love people from afar, you can care for people, but no longer um, include them in every aspect of your life, you know, in a close way. So I wish you all the best. I think good things are in store for you um, as long as you, you know, rest, get back to center, really start, um, you know, really believing in your gifts, you know, make a list, journal, um, you can use some of this eclipse energy that we're in and, you know, really ask the universe to, you know, bless you with the things here in the 3D that are going to propel you forward. All right, so if this resonates, let me know in the comments below, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links below. I do personal readings, tarot, as well as your natal chart readings. If you do personal natal chart reading in the month of December, I am offering a free tarot reading with that. You'll just let me know in the comments section of the, of the scheduler. Um, and the price will go up slightly for live readings in January. It will remain the same, what it is now, but it'll be for recordings. Okay, so I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Hope to see you in the next reading and be sure to thrive. Bye.